Hello, I'm Rishan Sharma, and and I'm going to tell you about. I want to take this opportunity to present what I've learned over the past year or so about machine learning and artificial intelligence. So, who am I? I'm I am 12 years old, and I have a huge interest in computer vision and machine learning. When I'm not programming, I'm either designing something to 3D print or I'm playing lots of chess. And currently I'm scavenging for components in broken computers. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about my introduction into the machine learning world. Then I will show you which methods I use to learn more, including reading from books, starting courses, and reading online articles. To finish the first section, I'm going to show the tutorials I followed from online sources. For ex the, two, the two tutorials I'm going to follow is to train a model to paint like an artist, also known as neural style transfer, and poetry generation. And these experiments were performed on a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigabytes of RAM. In the second part, um, I'm going to show you um, the experiments and mini projects I made by myself. Um, for example, to name a few, um, blind vision, um, um, a, an application to help the blind see, and then I try face detection, and uh, with two small front, two small and fun projects, and then colored barrel detection. And then I'm going to compare win the Windows 10 computer to a Raspberry Pi with the same barrel recognition program. Then I'm going, to, I'm going to show you my attempt at training with a cluster and in, in an attempt to improve the speed and the accuracy. And then finally, I'm going to give a summary of what I've learned so far and what I hope to do in the future. So I was interested with machine learning and AI by watching episodes of BBC Click and a, a program that showed the latest technology. Every episode, there was always a mention of machine learning and AI. Learning a try. So I searched online for for lots of different machine learning softwares. And the first choice I saw was TensorFlow. And I thought, what is this TensorFlow? Ah, oh, it's um, a machine learning software designed by Google. And, and then I was determined to make a project with machine learning. Now, in this section, I'm going to tell you um, my how I learned more and my beginnings and how I started off with machine learning with TensorFlow. With machine learning, I needed to find somewhere to start off. The first place I looked for was Google. And by chance, there was also a course by the company on machine learning and AI. It was called the Google Developers Crash Course. And I thought it was the right place to start off. The Google Developers Crash Course covered every part of machine learning, loss, accuracy, test and training sets, etc. The course used video lectures, exercises, and a quiz at the end to test learning. And in the videos, the presenters use a practical problem to train a machine learning on, such as to recognize spam or not spam. And what was really useful in the in the course is that they provided tasks to complete on an application called TensorFlow, TensorFlow Playgrounds, which is a useful way to work with neural networks visually. So once I started the course, I had several thoughts about it. It had several, it had covered all the basics as it should. 
it showed the applications of machine learning and AI. The TensorFlow playgrounds also helped to show what I was really doing. However, I thought it was a complicated topic for me, which led me to complete only half of the course, including the testing and training, the test training and validation sets, accuracy and loss. And then what did I learn? I learned that a lot of thinking is required to make a machine learning model, such as um, the complexity of it, how long it needs to train for, and etc. cetera. Um, and, and I also learned how to improve a model by al altering different variables, such as the time taken to train, and also um, the information you feed into the model, how, how to train. And here on the right, you can see an example running on TensorFlow Playgrounds. This orange and blue picture uh, on the right is the output or the results from the machine learning model. For example, this is, um, this is a classification um, program. It's classifying the blue dots and the orange dots rather successfully. And these and these colored boxes here are the nodes, uh, and they are the parts that make up a machine learning model. And these nodes are easier to compare these to the cells in our body, um, one of the basic building blocks of life. And then once you have a set of nodes um, depicted in a column, these are called layers. These, they, these also do, you can also call these the tissues, for example, of a machine learning model or a group of cells. So after I was finished with the course, I wanted a more hands-on approach. I took a break from TensorFlow and I started using a computer vision software called OpenCV. And I thought, and I really liked it because it used Python, my preferred language. It was sophisticated, yet it was very easy to use. Is, and it was very well documented. However, I thought it was very, it was harder to make sophisticated programs than you could in TensorFlow. I learned how to use this powerful library from a book called Learn OpenCV3, Computer Vision with Python, um, shown here. And it was very useful. The book started off easy, you, and but then it built upon these beginner concepts into something more complex such as um, the transition between face detection and then face recognition, which I'll explain in depth later on. So I used OpenCV in the 2019 Pios Challenge over the rainbow. It performed very well as it was very efficient at making decisions. And due to, this vast cap due to the vast capabilities OpenCV has, I still use it as my main computer vision library. After I tried all the examples in the book, I looked for useful websites I could use as reference for when I wanted to make a project. After excluding some websites, I found three of them that appealed to me. PyAmid Search, LearnOpenCV.com, and OpenCV.org. PyAmid Search is very, it's very good at showing how to make some mini projects, such as um, basic object rec detection and rocket recognition, a COVID-19 detector, a mass detector, and more. LearnOpenCV.com, like Pyramid Search, also has mi uh, mini projects and tutorials, but the website goes much broader, broader um, touching upon depth estimation and things like that. OpenCV.org is the official website, and it shows the latest updates. And at the time of making this PowerPoint, OpenCV 4.5 has just been released. And it has very good documentation. As well as this, as well as this OpenCV also has a very active forum where you can ask lots of questions about the software. So, 
What other resources gave me useful information? Some articles of the Magpie, other non-mainstream websites, articles written by Google developers, and other free eBooks found online. And in all these sources, I found the Magpie issues the most useful. In particular, the AI Made Easy issue and the Build a Low Cost Robot series was very helpful. To get inspiration for my projects, the Magpie is always my choice. What also helped as well was that I could always see the latest version of the Razi Pi in the Magpie. So I always knew when to start making projects that required more power or time. So in this slide, I'm going to talk about um, my own, the experiments I followed from online tutorials and they include generating handwritten di digits and also training a model to paint like an artist or neural style transfer. When the Raspberry Pi 4 was released and I was slowly getting used to, to using TensorFlow from the Google developers course, I started learning how to generate letters from an online TensorFlow tutorial. And the results I got was that it took a ridiculous amount of time and the output wasn't that great and it wasn't readable. It raised the temperature of the Raspberry Pi exponentially, but I later fixed that with the Raspberry Pi. However, I still learned more, a lot about generators and that machine learning models don't always do what you want them to do. So this is the process of the uh, of the text the handwritten digits generator. So first, make an artist, or also known as a generator. Then make the critic of the generator's images. The judge looks at the gen at the um, artist's image and then determines whether the image looks like it was meant it was made to be. Um, following my previous example, I explored different generative projects from the TensorFlow website. I tried the neural style transfer tutorial, as I mentioned before, to train a, to, uh, tra train a machine to paint like an artist. And the results I got, it took a short duration, duration to train, only 40 minutes for 10 epochs. It returned a good quality image and a possible improvement I could try is to train for longer for a more complex and detailed image. So the conclusion I got was that this is quite a very good example or tutorial to try using a Raspberry Pi. And I think it was very easy to extend this tutorial into something more complex. Then we have the process. First load the model from the TensorFlow Hub, um, a cloud-based platform designed by TensorFlow, where lots of different machine learning models are made, are kept for different purposes. Then pre-process the, um, the model and the images by changing the dimensions and color format so it can be trained. Then train the model and show the finished output after the generation. So after all these image-based examples, I decided to try text generation. To be more precise, I wanted poetry generation. So the results I got, um, it took a long, it took a very long time to get a high accuracy and a low loss. Even after a thousand epochs or a thousand iterations, it still doesn't make sense. And the experiment shows that the more, more time is required for results you want and for more understandable results. And you can see here, there's a lot of repetition of words here in the, in the first hundred epochs, such as dream, dream, dream. Then if we go straight to EPOTS 400, there is very few repetition of words. 
so it is so it is very slowly understanding poetry and text generation so um the flow a large database of poems is processed and it's converted into binary code as which is readable to tensorflow the poems are then fed through the model and it is trained then the train model generates a poem based on the provided seed text. As you can see here, I um, the seed text here was what is this life, which I've highlighted in bold. So now I'm going to show my own experiments which I made and my own mini projects. So I wanted to make a practical project or a project that would have um, some use in the real world. And I thought I had sufficient knowledge and I think, I, and I thought I learned enough to make a small one. I concluded to pick on object recognition since the book and the course touched upon it. Therefore, I decided to make a device for blind people or a device that would say what is in front of them. And I made this with a speaker, a Pi camera, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and a pair of IMAX glasses. And it made um, use of TensorFlow's cloud database or TensorFlow Hub. And I all the programs are on GitHub. So the uh, so the results. Um, it was quick and easy to make. There were plenty of resources online including the knowledge I already had. And there, was all, and there was also a possibility of taking this further. Um, so this is the flow. First load the model from the online cloud called TensorFlow Hub. Take a picture from the camera and process it so the model can understand um, the picture and it can make an inference then predict what the object is, and then speak it out through speakers. Um, so now I'm going to show a video um, where I explain the blind vision concept in much more detail. And this video is made almost two years ago. My name is Yusuf and I'm currently working on this application called Blind Vision. This project will recognize objects and say it out loud. So the uh, this hardware I used is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, a button connected to a breadboard, and a camera mounted onto some glasses. So now I'll just demonstrate it on a few objects. I'll be demonstrating on a tennis ball and a monitor. So once I press the button, it, the signal is sent to the Raspberry Pi, and then the camera, the camera is a photo is taken, and then the Raspberry Pi processes it. Tennis, ready. And now I'll connect to the, to the monitor. Monitor, ready. As you can see, the tennis ball needs it. it instead of saying tennis ball, it says tennis. So we can, I can improve, improve it so the labels are much more clear. Uh, yeah. So um, my next project was face detection with OpenCV. When I saw the face recognition in my parents' smartphones, I started becoming more interested in applying that technology into my own projects. I wasn't able to add full face recognition, the ability to recognize and classify faces, but I managed to add face detection, which is still pretty cool. And I use this technology in two fun projects called the Creepy Teddy Bear a teddy bear that fired a catapult whenever it sees a face, and the Piosaurin, a blazing eye that follows your face around using face tracking. So the general flow I followed for these two projects was first load the pre-trained model 
from the OpenCV library, predict on the prediction images and get a result, then perform an action based on these predictions. And um, now I'll sh speak about in more detail about these two projects. So the creepy teddy bear was a catapult that fired whenever it detected, detected a face, all housed in a teddy, in a little teddy bear. It used face detection technology and wireless GPIO, GPIO control, controlling one Raspberry Pi's GPIOs from another. And the Pyrosaurin, it was a blazing eye that followed your face around. It used computer vision and the sense hat and the Gitter blink. So the overall thoughts I had about these projects were that these were fun and simple projects and they made use of the OpenCV machine learning library, which not many people know about. And now on the next slide, I'm going to um, show another video um, showing the creepy teddy bear and I'm going to show the workings and how, how the creepy teddy bear worked. Hello, my name is Vishan and I made this fun project called The Rise of the Evil Titties. So I made this project to explore two concepts, one Raspberry Pi controlling another and face detection using OpenCV. So I, want, I wanted to explore one Raspberry Pi controlling another because I was fascinated how you, two, one Raspberry Pi can talk to another via Wi-Fi and how you can make a remote controller with one of the the Raspberry Pis. And I was also fascinated by fa face detection because I was really interested by it and it can easily be used using OpenCV. So here is my setup. This is the Raspberry Pi controlling this teddy bear and that's the Raspberry Pi controlling the catapult. So this is the camera which is not just for faces. And as you can see, there are two LEDs here which light up whenever the, the camera detects a face. Now we'll move on to the catapult. So here is the servo motor acting as a locking mechanism for the catapult. So when this Raspberry Pi receives a signal, it tells the servo motor to unlock, unlock, unlock the catapult and fire. So I decided to use the catapult because a couple months ago, I, ha I had to make a topic homework for my school and I decided to make a catapult. But now because the topic's over, I decided to put a Raspberry Pi functionality into it. And now here, the teddy bear, I decided to use a teddy bear because my sister gave it to me. And I thought, why not turn it, put a Raspberry Pi inside it? And for some fun, I added some sound effects as well. So, you can see the Raspberry Pi or the Raspberry Pi Zero controlling the server motor, as I mentioned before. And the Raspberry Pi isn't perfectly inside the teddy bear, but I think it would count. And I also put some two LEDs in the eyes and, there's, and then we have a speaker to add some sound effects. So now there's Hello, a demo. Hello, my name is Zishan and I made this fun project oh, called- This video showing the creepy teddy bear at work. I will be doing the demo. So first I'll just run the program. So now I'll call my sister. Should I come? It is detecting the face and it is barking. So should I go? Now I just need to reset it. Now because my sister is gone and there is no face and it is stopped. So should I come again? And that's and now dropped it. So um, um, there is no projectile inside the catapult, but you can easily imagine something else. Um, you can imagine a projectile inside it. So I I decided to skip the the text explanation because it was unnecessary. I. So now. Uh, I will now be presenting one of my two projects. Pi of Soren. So first, meet the character itself, the Eye of Soren. 
in the lord of the rings series trilogy it is depicted as an evil character and searches for its for enemies it is the soul of the evil character sauron who is also an evil character so now here is my project for the display i have used a sensat which is a very useful led array um um th there is um the sensat here the the eight times the rgb matrix um showing a picture of an eye not sure you can see that clearly now you can see it more more clearer here's the eye and because my face is at the right, the eye also turns to the right. And to then, the right, the eye can and then and moves back to its original position. And when there's no face, it moves back. Fun project called. I will now be. So after lockdown started, and the powers at home began, I wanted to do some of the challenges which would have happened if not for COVID nineteen. As I've learned much about machine learning and computer vision. I wanted to do the eco disaster challenge or to sort the red barrels into a yellow section and the green barrels in the blue section. And um, I'm going to present the results in the next few slides. So what worked and um, what, oh, sorry. Um, I also thought this would be a good idea since in the summer of the rainbow challenge, I'd use color detection and if I used machine learning instead, it could speed things up a lot. So what worked and what didn't? The program managed to, de to detect green barrels and red barrels. However, it classified anything other than green as red. I had about 25 images, which is not enough or may not be enough for a reliable output. And despite being trained up to 97%, it still made um, small mistakes. So how did I fix the problem? I think the program um, detected um, white barrels as, as green because I didn't create a separate class for any, anything other than red and green barrels. And another so solution I could have had for the small mistakes were um, I think I had a, um, I made a mistake on my behalf when organizing the images in the right folder for training. So here is the process. First, load all the training images and process them so they are only ones and zeros. And make sure all the images are of the same dimensions and um, color format. Then make a machine learning model using TensorFlow and Keras, another library to help in machine learning and AI, and then feed the training images through it. Then finally, train the model. Once that's done, predict on a batch of testing images to check if the model has done well. If it predicts poorly, check the model features and train it again for longer. So here are my results. You can see here it detects a red barrel as being red, green as green, and etc. However, it made small mistakes, um, such as here, as detecting a green barrel as red. Um, so what I could do is maybe train for longer, use a larger variety of images, or check if all the folders um, have the right, um, right color images. So this white barrel needs a separate class for itself because the Raspberry Pi doesn't know what other class to give it since it knows only green and red. And you can see it detects accurately. So n now I uh, compared the Wind a Windows 10 computer and a Raspberry Pi, um, Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so the conclusion I got from these tests show that the PC and the Raspberry Pi achieve the same results, but the only difference is the PC is faster at inferencing than the Raspberry Pi. Um, 
about 30 minutes faster than a Raspberry Pi. And I think the mismatched barrel was a mistake on my behalf in taking the pictures. And what's really interesting here is that this barrel is the same as this one, and they both detect it as red. So um, I, tried, I tried to train with a cluster as, or a set of Raspberry Pis in an attempt to improve speed and accuracy. After working with TensorFlow for over a year, I read an article written in the Magpie written by PJ Evans about how to set up a basic cluster and perform simple calculations. I attempted to take my previous projects further and use a cluster for training. It didn't work, however, but I could because I couldn't distribute the, the models among the Raspberry Pis. I was only using two, and nor could I merge them together. And I stopped at that point because I was pretty confused, and I still am. So the general flow, which would which should which I tried was to collect or to organize the multiple Raspberry Pis into a cluster. Each node trains on their own version of the model, then send all the models together to the host computer and then merge them together. And finally, the host computer predicts. So my lessons learned and looking to the future. So the main points from my experiments and learnings was that text generative projects perform poorly compared to image-based ones. The Raspberry Pi is well suited for image recognition and generation. And generative pro programs can give interesting and also disappointing results. And some notes about um, OpenCV is that it's very powerful and also very flexible. Um, it's, uh, it has lots of capabilities. And when seeing this PowerPoint, you can see I used it for nearly half, most more than half of my projects. And um, and and overall, uh, machine learning and AI um, works very well with the Raspberry Pi four. I'm not sure if that's the same case for different different versions of the Raspberry Pi. And looking forwards, it it would be better and efficient to get the cluster training working. And maybe I could learn about predictive text, for example, to predict whether someone has COVID-19 or not, based on their gender, race, and their eating habits. But yes. And now I've reached to the end of my PowerPoints, and now I'm accepting questions. What a fantastic talk, Christian. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, we are taking questions from the chat if there are any for Rishan. Otherwise, I've got a couple of questions of my own while we wait for people sure. to uh, type out what, what they want to ask you. Uh, firstly, uh, have you tried using uh, other systems than the Raspberry Pi to train your software and then run the models on the Raspberry Pi, or have you been doing all your training on the Pi? Um, I've mainly been doing my training on the Raspberry Pi. Cool. And uh, for the... Uh, for the COVID data sets, uh, have you seen the thing called Kaggle? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So this is a large is the hub of data sets. sets, yes. I, I love the system, in fact, uh, as uh, as Alex <laughs> says, uh, this is exactly the kind of project that I would love to have built when I was a kid, because uh, uh, me and my sister were constantly, we love each other really, but we, we, had, we were constantly fighting. So uh, that's great. Although it does touch a little bit on the whole, uh, Autonomous uh, turret kind of uh, gun thing that, that worries yeah. me a little bit. You know, occasionally I, I get concerned that we're we're actually building the next generation of Terminator robots. <laughs> uh, I was also really impressed to see what you did with uh, the, the the barrel uh, moving challenge. Uh, yeah. That was one that I was really worried about tackling, and actually one of the reasons that I didn't want to enter Pi Wars was that <laughs> year was that I was scared of doing that challenge. Yeah. Uh, so I was really, really impressed to, to see you doing that. Yeah, great question from someone. Are you coming to Pi Wars at home 2021? Um, not sure. Um, probably, 
I might. I'm just not sure. Okay, okay. So, but you're not working on anything for it yet. Um, I'm I'm working on scavenging things from old computers. Okay, what to build into a Pi Wars robot? Um, no. Um, just like I made a lamp so far from the LCD screen from a old computer. Oh, using the backlight. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So was that from a screen where the pixel bit was dead, but the backlight was working? Yeah. Because the other cool project I've seen is one where the backlight isn't working, and you can then use it to make a projector. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if that's possible with modern screens, but it's something you used to be able to do. You yeah. shine, shine light through the back. And they powered the lamp with the Raspberry Pi Zero with a blinket on top. Oh wow! I'm surprised it had enough power. That's really cool. Yeah. So are you, are you thinking uh, more along the, the PC side for your future stuff? Or are you going to stick with the Pi as your first love and the PC side? The the yeah, okay. Maybe, he says. Okay, yeah, uh, that'll, that'll do. It's better than nothing. Okay, oh, Ford's got a great question. Uh, are you familiar with the, uh, the other single board computers on the market yeah. that are more designed for uh, AI and machine learning? Um. Uh, I, I've heard of the Jetson Nano, and I know NVIDIA a lot. My dad works with them. And I've, I'm not sure, I don't know a lot about the Jetson Nano. Yeah. Uh, well, not really. I, I'm not used on myself, but Ford may be able to tell us. I think it's, uh, it's still a Linux platform, so all the skills that you've learned on the part are going to be transferable. And it's going to still be able to run OpenCV, but just run it a lot faster, I think, is the, is the trick. Like one of the problems that I've had on the Pi, I don't know if you found this, was uh, trying to do real-time image detection from stuff like video. Yeah, with video. I mean, it's all right, but it's a bit laggy. Yeah, I found that I had to like, take the resolution of the video down quite a lot. So that's one of the reasons that I'm interested in playing with the... Uh, uh, Raspberry Pi high resolution camera at some point, yes. you know, the new camera, because that's got a telephoto lens. So, in theory, we could maybe like zoom right in on what we're looking at so the image can fill up the whole screen so we can run it at super low res and get really fast machine learning stuff going on. Yeah, I've also heard of the Edge TPU in the Magpie by Google. Um, right, yeah, is that the, the Coral or is that something? Yes, different? yes, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I think, I think they're quite similar boards, right? Or in, in terms of, you know, they've got some sort of GPU available. But yeah, the, the Pi 4 is supposed to have quite a capable GPU. And I remember when it came out, it was uh, it was difficult to use because the software wasn't there. I think they've made a lot of progress in making that uh, usable for us. And I see things like uh, the, the hardware accelerated um, Quake 3 and Doom and things like that that we've got now that we didn't use to be able to have. Yeah, and he's, he's, David's got another one. Have you heard of the Intel Movidus and Intel oh. Neural USB sticks? Yes, That's I've heard of those as well. Yeah. Like now every company is making their own um, ML accelerators. But obviously, if it can run on the Pi, it's going to run even better on those things. I was actually involved in a project at Cambridge University where we wanted to make a facial recognition camera. Uh, and we, we know that these things are available. But we based the project on the Pi uh, so that we, we had something that we knew was going to work well no matter what the target product was. Uh, we came up with a system called Deep Dish in the end, uh, which you, there's a paper about it online if you want to see it. And that's for uh, like people counting facial recognition is the, is the target. So you could like put it in the lobby of a building and it would be able to tell you how many people are coming and going, which is strangely useful now we've got COVID and things like that. We really need to know how many people are in our buildings. Yeah. So yeah. really, really hot topic. You know, lots of people in the Internet of Things world want to want to be able to do this. So the fact that you're doing it on a Raspberry Pi is pretty good. <laughs> do we have any more questions for Rishan? I love the poetry thing myself. Uh, that's actually one of the one of the things that first got me into uh, computer programming was the idea of doing generative uh, text. There used to be a, an old-fashioned program called Racta that was a storytelling program, uh, and uh, it didn't use machine learning. It used a technique called Markov chains, uh, which I 
don't know if you've heard of. No. Basically, what you do is you'd analyze a big corpus of text like you were doing, uh, but instead of trying to uh, trying to do anything clever with a neural network, you just try and chain what word is likely to come next. And so it just follows this long yes. chain of, yeah. And that, that kind of was really amusing yeah. stuff. I think they call them RNNs now. RNN. Oh, the current neural networks. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the Markov chain is even more simple than that. But yeah. similar, similar kind of similar kind of uh, results, certainly. Um, I love uh, there's a blogger called Janelle Shane who does a blog called AI Weirdness, uh, <laughs> and uh, she she wrote a book called You Look Like a Thing and I Love You, which is one of the phrases that her robot came up with. <laughs> so I recommend that if you want to see some more funny funny texts generated by computers. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got some more questions in the chat. Uh, seen a few benchmarks on the Pi, so it does work, yes. Uh, the USB 3 didn't seem to help. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Don't know if we can we can run enough bandwidth to use these compute things. Uh, it, it, yeah, I think it's fine, depending on what you want to do. I mean, when you've got a slower USB, you need to maybe batch stuff off more to the, the neural compute side of things, uh, pipeline your stuff in a smart way.